Hey, welcome back to the Hoosier Garage. We're gonna work on the old 72 Dodge van, as usual. And we're gonna review this product from Harbor Freight. Okay, so we've got the 72 Dodge. We're jumping around on a lot of different stuff. One major thing we're trying to do right now is just get it back on the road, but uh, we're pretty much ready for that. We're just uh, get the insurance and the license and all that kind of jazz, all that stuff that we all got to do on any of our vehicles. But right now, since we have time to work on it, we're gonna do a little bit of body work. And uh, the, really the, the most difficult part that I have here is on the side. And if you see it right off, great. I don't think I pointed it out very much before, if at all. But we have something that takes a little bit of a heavy duty situation, some skill and some uh, thorough massaging to get it back because it's in a tight spot and not so much tight as in like hard to get to. It's just in a, in a bin and all that sort of thing. So what we got right here, this van has hit something or something's hit it. And from about here, all the way to here, it's pushed it in. What's well, right on the snub nose over here of this area. So there's a lot of action going on in the way of bending and this hard cut up here. So you don't want to just fill this out with Bondo. One, because it's on a corner and it might hit something again and it'll fall off and break and, and it won't look good. It'll be kind of shoddy and not professional. And we want to do it right because this is flat right here. But once you get here, it caves in and then it kind of comes back out to normal, but there's a crease here and it should just come down smooth. It's not necessarily pushed in really far. It's just kind of got an impact deal going on there and it's really bad there. That's the worst of it right here. So we need to pull this out. You can't access it from the backside because this is a welded fender. It's welded on. If you open this hood, there's no access, there's a wall right through there. So um, yeah, we're gonna need something to help us do that. And what we have is this dent repair stud welder from Chicago Electric, AKA Harbor Freight, one of their in-house brands, whatever that is. And I have used one of these before, that's why I bought this one. The one I used before, I was borrowing from somebody and I was actually very impressed with it. They turned me on to this and I wanted to go get my own, mainly for this project right here. I knew that it would be helpful. And you can see we got a gun here, or it should have a gun in it. I haven't even opened it yet. I mean, it's popped open here, but I haven't taken the, the, the shells open. We got this stud welder gun, which will weld these pins into place. And then you get a slide hammer here that's special and it hooks into the end of these and you can pull it out. So we'll show you what's gonna happen now. Okay, now I'm gonna put you here first. This is probably where the damage shows maybe the most. We need to clean this up and get it down to bare metal. And if you're wondering what size or what grit roll a deck, uh, roll a, whatever they call them, roll a disc. This is, it's a 40 grit. Pretty scratchy looking, but it gets us to bare metal, gets through the old paint that was under here, and gets us pretty much prepared. So we know we wanna absolutely pull this area out here, uh, and a little bit down through here, it needs to come out. And you'll see, we'll have to do a series of them. We can't just do it one big pull, it's gonna be several pulls. All right, so here's the first time opening this up. So far, so good, it looks like we got everything. Instructions. You get two different sizes of these pins. These are probably, I don't know, an eighth of an inch. These are about a sixteenth of an inch. You get a different tip here for, I think, the size difference. Your slide hammer, which has the, it's like a little thumb wheel right here. And it allows it to, when you hook it in there, it allows it to grab it. And then when you pull your pressure back on it that holds it and then you could do that deal then you get the main product here and it's your stud welder it's a big guy 
Uh, you got your button back here. I think the one I used had a trigger up here, like kind of where you would expect, but I don't recall completely. And uh, so here's your tip that comes on it. It is, uh, it's the larger size, so it'll handle these, and these smaller ones will go with that tip there. So we'll just set this up, get it plugged in, and uh, I'll show you how it works. You put your little stud in that fits the correct size on the tip here, and the ball end goes out to where you're gonna put the ball on here. So slip down in there, push it all the way in, flush, like that, okay? Sometimes they're hot, that's not, it's hot down there obviously, but pretty firm there, okay? So, we'll get us another stud, and we'll start strategically placing where we know we can use it as leverage to pull it out. You might get a few now and then that'll just snap right off while you just didn't get good enough ground or hold it in there long enough. But you can always just clean it up and reapply it. And if you can't get in here, I think I might not be able to get to this part. You can always come back through later after you break these off, sand them down smooth, and you can take care of it then. See, that one only touched here on the ground side so it seems relatively solid. Okay so to get a grip on this thing, this wheel, it'll spin all the way from one side. It's like a an oblong kind of shape there, okay? So you put it on there and you might have to work it around a little bit so it'll move over the stud and put it on about there. And then just drag it back as you pull the slide hammer back. My left hand is pulling the slide hammer back and I, I make sure this has some, some force on it backwards towards me like that. And now, if you look back here, I'm holding it, okay? So, we should be able to start working with this. If you let up on it, it'll disengage it, so. Okay, so I've pulled it out a little bit. What it does, it kind of puckers it outward, kind of convex. So you don't want to go crazy with it, but we can take it off of here. And you have some little tooth marks there from it. Try to go to the next one and do the same thing. And so on and so forth. As we get into this corner, it's going to keep going deeper so I can get a little more aggressive. And I'm looking at it from up here. I'm standing and looking down on it, and I'm seeing this kind of dipping in like that. Well, I can just eyeball this and get it nice and flat. It kind of comes with the plane of the hood, this front edge of the hood, all the way down through here. See, that was a bad stud. Well, we might be able to use it. Sometimes you can't use them again. So we'll just move on to the next one. Try to work that deeper area out. There. It's pretty heavy, so we'll uh, back off on that a little bit. Now 
Now this one, it'll, it should be in this plane on this side. So, but it also has a little bit of a kick, so I don't want to go too far with that. Okay. So as we look up here, here's our plane of the hood. And it's, it was kind of retracting in here as it got into this corner. So I was just kind of eyeballing it more. And you can use a straight edge, of course, but just eyeballing this and bringing it out. And you see it kind of puckers it outward a little bit, so you don't want to keep going too far. Or else you have to go back in with a hammer or something. So this one's brought it out. This one's brought it out. The one we snapped here, we we'll have to put a new one on. And we brought this out significantly. And we want it to all oh, eventually to line up with this plane here see that and then it drops in so we'll have to really work on this area here this up here will have to be brought out and i might add some up here next just to uh add to it so so far this thing's working really good it's look, working like the one i used before and it's a nice little tool for work, doing stuff like this where you can't get to areas otherwise Alright, so one really time consuming part of it is you're going to want to cut these off. You might be tempted to take it and work it, snap it off, but it's going to leave a hole. And that's one of the points of this is to keep you from having holes. So you're better off just uh, cutting it right down near the surface and then going back over and smoothing it out. Now, if you go to put new ones on in the, in the same area, make sure you don't put it right on top of where you put the old ones because then that's going to be kind of a moot point. Put it in between them. So if you got like one here and one here, don't put it right back here and here. Put one in between, and that way you're just gradually working that area out. Okay, so I think we got this in a pretty good place. It's not perfect, and I'm sure some people could do a lot better, uh, body guys in particular. I've got most of this pulled out here within reason. It was kind of, this was the worst part right here where it was really bashed in. And it's still in, in spots, but when I've put some of the studs on there, there's so much, uh, when you get this on it, so to speak, so much tension there that it'll either pucker directly out like a, almost like a little pimple and it doesn't bring everything out now right here that did come come true it was way in and it came way out and it actually leveled a lot of that back where it should be it's still rough right here everything else is pretty good at this point you can take you some fiberglass uh, short hair and work that over and if, if you like this video uh, make sure you like and subscribe because I'll go over that on one of the next one as we are going over the bodywork here and there uh, in this whole series on the 72 Dodge B200 van. So, uh, yeah, this is still a good product. Second time I've used one, uh, Chicago Electric, you can get a Harbor Freight. I think it's about $90 and it comes up about $100 with uh, the tax and everything. And then if you want, you can get a... Um, what do they call that? The little warranty 
which I went ahead and got that since it's Harbor Freight and it's electrical and you pay that much. That's kind of my line. If you get around a hundred dollars, I'll get the warranty. Um, so far so good. I still have quite a few of the, the heavier pins like this, the studs, and I have a whole bag of the small ones so I can do a lot of small projects. Uh, works great on hail damage if you're redoing your roof anyways. You get heavy things. You can use the smaller ones and pop them usually without having to put any filler in there. Um, there's also an attachment you can get for the tip and you can put on the little studs down the side if you have the, the aluminum or the stainless trim that goes down the side of your car or even like on final tops, the, the roof trim and all that stuff. You have the little T-shaped studs round on top. You can buy the studs and there's even a little fitting that you can buy and put on here and you pssst, burn it into the the, uh, the panel. So it's worth having, especially if you got something like that or you're just trying to do stuff like this. So, good product. I'm sure there's some other uses if there is. Leave that in the comments down below and we'll be seeing you next time on the Hoosier Garage. We hope you've enjoyed the preceding short feature.